welcome back. So, does anybody here know what a Linux security module is? Okay, well great, Linux security modules are really uh, very uh, fascinating little aspect of the, the kernel that we've got. Uh, it allows you to apply additional restrictions to the existing traditional uh, Linux security policies. Uh, in general, um, the mechanisms reflect the existing policies, the mode bits that you see on files, for example. Uh, in a few cases, they actually uh, are used for other things, security concerns that aren't necessarily uh, what you would normally consider a security policy issue. Uh, these are things uh, like binding to sockets. Um, that isn't really something where you've got a, a subject or an object involved, but uh, it's a security thing. You know, it's something that people think is a security issue. So we've got, got uh, mechanisms for, for controlling that. Today, well, today we've got a, mecha a mechanism we call module stacking, where you can have registered more than one security module. Uh, back in the, in the uh, old days, you could only have one. Uh, Yama came in and we had to, that was manually stacked in, it was hard coded in. That didn't really sit very well, so we fixed that, so we now have just lists of modules. Uh, but we have some issues with that. Um, the problem really came down to the fact that the way we manage data, we call them security blobs. Uh, which we associate with the various uh, thing, you know, things that are um, managed within the kernel. Uh, but you only had one pointer off of each of these things. So you could really only have one module at a time. We've changed that a little bit. So now we actually have uh, LSM types. Uh, we've got uh, legacy major, which are the old kind of, of major modules, the SE Linux, Mac, Tomoyo, uh, App Armors. Um, and we also have what we call, an, some of the modules are marked as exclusive. So what does exclusive mean? Um, an exclusive module, is, you can only have one of them. So if you have, you know, SC Linux is marked exclusive, AppArmor is app marked exclusive, that means you can't use them both at the same time. That's bad. Now, for a long time, you know, people kind of threw up their hands and said, well, why would anybody ever want to do that? Uh, that was before the days of containers. Now in the container world, we've got people who are running Ubuntu on their, their data center. They want to run Android in their containers. Well, uh, nobody ever wanted to do anything crazy like that before. Um, so now we've got these exclusive modules, we can't use them together. Um, so the goal of the, the, the project we're working on these days is to get rid of the notion of exclusive module, to mark as many modules as we possibly can as to be not exclusive. Um, but why do we have to have them exclusive? And why can't we just load them all up? Well, it's because of the security, again, it's because of the security blobs. So as of the 5.3 kernel, uh, we have a set of blobs that are, instead of being managed by the security modules themselves, they're managed by the infrastructure. So when uh, you, you load SE Linux, SE Linux tells the infrastructure how much space it wants in the credential and the file and the inode blobs. And the infrastructure takes care of allocating it and freeing it. And then the security modules can, can use it to their heart's content. What this means is that if you have a security module that uses just these blobs, doesn't use any other blobs, you don't have to mark it as exclusive, and you can run it at the same time you're running SE Linux. And so you don't have to turn off SE Linux. Your IT people are really happy because, hey, you've got the standard thing with, with SE Linux, you're still using that, Everybody, everybody's fine. But you've also got this other security module that you've built that can go in and use those, use those interfaces to do whatever it wants. So you don't have to eschew SE Linux just because you've got this new, new cool thing implementing some policy of your choice. And that's great. So right now, yeah, we've got 
a number of minor modules coming in. We've got Sarah, White Egret, uh, Landlock, um, several others that I've he heard of today um, that I had not heard of before um, that are coming in that we can you can put in with SC Linux or App Armor or Smack or Tomoyo and and they just run run flawlessly. Uh, they don't interfere with each other very much, and everybody's happy. But not everybody's happy, because we still have uh, some limitations. So that brings us around to what's coming next. So the plan is, and no, we're not there yet. We don't know for absolute sure. We've got to get enough sign-offs and tested buys and, and uh, act buys in order to make sure we can get this. But we've got the, the code actually to a point where it's pretty close to solid, I hope. Um, and so the goal for our next, next major release on this, and we're targeting 5.5, is to remove the exclusive from AppArmor. Why is AppArmor our, our next target? AppArmor is different from SMAC. It's different from SC Linux in that it is path name based ish. Less so now than it used to be. Uh, but it has a different, a different fundamental security model than either uh, SMAC or SC Linux. SMAC and SC Linux are based on subjects and objects where the objects are you know, things like the inode, whereas AppArmor is much more oriented toward path names. The profiles are different, the use cases are different. So it does in some cases make sense to have SC Linux and AppArmor if you want to do, get the kinds of values you get from both of those. Or do use SMAC and, and AppArmor if you want to do, do certain configurations. So it does make sense to actually you know, target AppArmor as the next thing that we want to, to get the exclusive tag off of. That requires a couple of, we do a couple of things. Uh, first off, we need to add the SOC uh, security blob to those that, those that are managed by the infrastructure. That's actually a relatively straightforward thing. We know how to do that. We've actually done it with the, you know, with the, these, with these other blobs. So it's just a matter of you know, take that code, change, change a few names in it, and everybody's happy. Everything thing runs smoothly. But that's not the only problem we've got. That's the easy part. Yeah, I love fixing the easy part because that doesn't take very long. Um, and nobody complains about it. It's when you get to the hard part that people start to do things like bike shed. And um, the favorite one on that one, um, if you've got AppArmor and SC Linux running at the same time, you have to deal with the fact that both of these LSMs want to look at ProcPID at our, con at our current to find out what the uh, security attributes of the process are. Now, since both of them want to do that same thing, you can't do that because you don't know who it is. So we're introducing a couple of, couple of new interfaces here. Um, prop pit at our context, which is like current, except that it has all of the information about all of the security modules that are affecting the process at the same time. And it's done in a, a very simple format. It's the name of the LSM, a null, the value, a null, name of the next LSM, a null, the value, and so forth. So if you have, for example, if you have SMAC and AppArmor on a system, you'll get, this, uh, you'll get the SMAC label, the word SMAC, and then this, the value for the SMAC label the word app armor and then the value for that, uh, that context. Um, it's also, we're also introducing a SO pure context, which is like uh, Pierce, uh, SO pure sec. It's the same set of information, but it's what comes across a Unix, what comes across a socket. Um, again, we have to have a different interface because you can't be backward compatible if you change the format. And we proposed at least about a half a dozen different um, formats for this 
comma-separated separa lists in a, in a known order or smack equals value, comma, app armor equals a value. But um, we finally did the, the intelligent thing, which was to ask the user community, and in particular the guys from Dbus, said, ask them, okay, well, what do you want to see? And they said, well, just give us, give us a null separated list. We'll know how long it is. So you know, we'll read the first one and say, oh, that's not all of it. And keep going until we've gotten it all. So that's kind of a lesson. If you're doing, doing kernel development and uh, you're, you have an issue like this, don't just debate it amongst yourselves. You'll never come up with the right answer. Ask somebody who's going to use it. And then they'll tell you what they want. And then you can say, OK, I don't have to worry about it anymore. I'm going to go with what they want. Uh, but that still doesn't solve all the problems because, of course, we've got legacy programs. Um, how many of you have changed system daemons recently? OK, nobody. Excellent. Okay. How many have changed the kernel recently? OK, a whole lot more. OK. What does this tell us? It tells us that people are changing the kernel. They're not changing the system, system services. People don't want to touch those things. I mean, they've been working for 10 years. Um, yeah, they got some CVEs, but somebody else will take care of that. And it's like, you know, no, I'm, it's a system service. I'm not going to change that. Nobody's changing these things. So we need mechanisms that will allow us to run these things in the way they're accustomed without breaking. And so we have to uh, come up with a mechanism whereby we can say, under these circumstances, you should you use the SE Linux information. Under these circumstances, you should use the SMAC information and so forth. So we're introducing another process attribute, which we're calling the display. So you write proc self adder display, and you write the name of the LSM you want to get the information for. Uh, this is especially useful if, for example, um, like the App Armor people are doing, where you're using SC Linux in a container on top of your App Armor system, or the other way around. So you can say, when you start up the container, you can set the display to SC Linux, and so the things that are running in the container will think they're using SC Linux. They'll get the information about SC Linux. That's what they're expecting. Everybody's happy. The base system can use App Armor, um, get the information they want. Everybody's happy, and you haven't had to change any of those pesky system services. Uh, because again, nobody wants to change them. They just work. Now, there was a big long debate here about how you would decide whether or not it would be OK to change the display. Uh, my, my original take on it was, why not? And it's like, it's system information. Why should anybody care what, what the display is? Well, Stephen Smalley had some really good reasons why you wouldn't want to do that. Uh, you might be able to, for example, trick, uh, trick a program into writing a context that uh, another LSM wouldn't be able to use at the right, in, in the right time. It was all very messy. Uh, so my first, my first section was, well, fine. We'll put it under cap Mac admin because that's the right thing to do. That's the capability used to con control changes to the mandatory access control environment. Well, SE Linux people didn't like that either. Turns out that they don't like using capabilities. They want to do all the privilege control themselves. <sighs> OK, fine. So what do they want? Well, what they wanted is every LSM to, to pipe in and say, yes or no. Just, no, I don't like that. Yes, I do like that. Um, and since the default on that was going to be, yes, yeah, sure, go ahead, then you're fine. Everybody's got to, each of the LSMs that has that, that uses the, the proc interface now has to have, a dis have, to, have to say how it's going to vote on using the display. And so SE Linux has actually added a, an element to the policy, which is whether or not you can modify the display. App Armor has done essentially the same thing. And Smack goes, yeah, sure, go ahead, because that's the right thing. Um, the other thing that came up is Binder. Um, any of you familiar with Binder? 
Okay, great. Yes, okay. So binders is something that Android uses. It's an, access con it's an application access control mechanism that came from somewhere else. Um, okay, somebody's laughing. That's good. Yeah, uh, it's, it has its own, own intrinsic uh, issues. Uh, but one of the things that it does do is it uses the, mechanism, the internal mechanisms for displaying the security context to pass information from one side of the, of the bind to the other. And so we had to make sure that when you run the binder that the sender and the receiver are talking about the same LSM when they pass the information. It doesn't matter which one it is just so long as, as it's the same one so that it doesn't send an SC Linux context to a process that, that, that thinks it's going to be, be looking for app armor because they get app armor and, and, and SC Linux get very confused. Now Smack's pretty good about this. Smack, Smack will take anything as a valid context. Uh, but that's just kind of an implementation detail of that. Uh, the next thing that we had to do is uh, do some enhancement to the audit data. Because what do you do when you have two subject labels? One from SC Linux, one from App Armor, one from Smack, from, one from App Armor. Uh, you can't just put that in a compound context because the audit records are going, the audit parsers are, aren't going to be able to deal with that from a compatibility standpoint. So we're adding additional information, additional fields into the audit record when you've got more than one LSM that has subject information. So in this example here, we have SC Linux as the first LSM and App Armor is the second. So it's going to say the subject is A colon B colon C colon D, which is the SC Linux context. But then we're also going to say, and then the, the, the uh, subject for SC Linux is going to be A colon B colon C colon D, and the subject for App Armor is going to be Z or whatever it happens to be. Yeah, this is a little verbose. Yeah, there's a, there's a little bit of duplication of information in there. But for backward compatibility, backward compatibility, thank you. You need to have the subs equals because the, everything that reads audit records is going to be looking for that. And the new tools, you're going to need to know which LSM is responsible for for which data. And without some ind indication that says, oh, by the way, the subject is going to be the SC Linux subject, you need to actually have that as well. So you can't drop the subject equal, even though it's redundant in this case. Um, and because App Armor doesn't currently have object labels on anything, we don't need to do it for objects. But we are going to have, have to do it um, at some point in the future. So when we need to do that, we're going to do the same thing there. So the audit records are going to get bigger, and they have to because there's more information involved. So that's actually what we need to do for, for App Armor. It's not very, not actually very complex. Well, it, it doesn't look very complex on the outside. Uh, there's a, a significant amount of um, data structure changes within the kernel that nobody outside the kernel sees in order to deal with the, the compound contexts. Uh, one of the issues is that when you allocate one of these text strings, you then have to free it at some point. But in order to do that, you need to know which LSM allocated it because they have different policies for, whether, for how you should go about freeing it. So there's a little bit of complication there, but it actually makes the, some of the internal interfaces a little bit cleaner. So I consider that a win. So that's what we need to do to take the uh, exclusive tag off of App Armor. So when we've got that in, then there's the next phase here, which is coming, along, coming before all that long. And that's the next step. And the next step, set of goals is, is really simple, and that is to remove the exclusive completely. And that would be from SC Linux and from, from SMAC, so that you could mount, use any of the security modules together all at once, um, and uh, singing in three-part harmony, and it'll all be beautiful. This is a little bit more challenging. And the reason why it's a little bit more challenging is that Smack and SC Linux do a lot of the same things. In particular, they use, both use networking extensively. 
So we have to add a few more uh, infrastructure managed blobs uh, that would be include. So along with the SOC, we have to have the key and the super block. Uh, super black par block partly because both SE Linux and Smack use mount options. Mount options are a really challenging set of, uh, set of interfaces, as David Howells will tell you at length, if you let him. Um, Alviro will concur because he's been working with, with David on uh, restructuring the, the uh, mount interfaces. Um, that's one of the things that, that we have. So in, instead of uh, just saying, well, I'm going to send it to the LSM to, to do the mount options, you have to say, I'm going to send it to all the LSMs that do mount options. And oh, by the way, um, if you give a mount option that you don't recognize, you have to not pay attention to it because somebody else might, might be paying attention to it. But then in the end, you still have to say, wait a second, nobody paid attention to this. So it's a li adds a little bit of, of complication there. But it's not actually as bad as it sounds. Well, actually it is. Um, but then we have to get onto the networking stuff. The networking stuff has a, has a, a wonderful set of challenges. Uh, the first of them is, <clears throat> is the net label interface. Um, the net label interface is very convenient, very powerful. It allows you to generically do uh, packet labeling using the uh, Cipso and Calypso uh, network protocols. Uh, but if you have two LSMs that want to put labels on packets, you have to decide what to do about this because you can't put two labels on the packet. You can only put one. So they're after a lot of crying and gnashing of teeth on how, you know, how we could possibly make this work. Finally agreed uh, that the, the right thing to do is to, to say, if you can get the LSM, all the LSMs to agree on the labeling, then you can do it. And if you can't, you have to fail it. Well, that's a little bit harsh, but yeah, it kind of makes sense. If you're going to put a label on a packet, and if you can't get people to agree on what, it's, what it should be, then you probably shouldn't send it. Actual uh, deployment indicates that this is going to happen very rarely because the granularity of, that the LSMs use is going to be very different. Um, but there, there are circumstances you can, you can use where, where this will actually, actually come out. Um, part of the problem with it is that you set the label on the, LS, the, the net label interface. At the beginning, you say, when you create the site, you say, this is, this is how I want this to be labeled. Well, what that would mean is that if, if you don't agree when you're creating the socket, the socket creation is going to fail, and you're going to, to to fall over, and that means nobody's ever going to create a socket because no, nobody's going to agree at that point. You don't really care about it until you actually want to send it. So there's some slight change to the netlabel interface that has to happen in order to make that actually work properly. Um, some change in SC Linux, uh, but more change in, in SMAC because SMAC doesn't use netlabel the same way SC Linux uses netlabel, and that makes things complicated. So uh, SMAC has opportunities for improvement, so those, have, those do have to go in. So that's for, for, for packet labeling. Um, that's a bit of, bit of a project. Uh, but once you can actually get, get it so that the, the, you, can set la you can request the label you want, and then when you're actually going to send the packet, that's when you decide whether or not you're gonna, you agree on what it should be labeled. Um, then you can actually have a system that, that functions, at least marginally, uh, in some cases. The next issue uh, would be uh, sec marks. Um, so if you're using uh, NF tables or IP tables, um, you've got a, this opportunity to put 32 bits into the packet head, you know, into the, the SK buff to pass it around and recommend what the, uh, the labeling should be. Unfortunately, 32 bits is not enough for, to represent two LSMs, or three LSMs, or six LSMs. So um, we have to do something. 
not clear exactly what we're going to do. Um, a hash table to come up with, with a mapping, possibility, uh, exclusive use. This is the easiest way to do it. Just say, well, yeah, SC Linux is good. Smack's going to say, hey, SC Linux wants to use it. Sure, go ahead. I won't bother. Uh, or vice versa. That's another way to do it. That's, that's kind of a cop out, though. Uh, not everybody likes that one. An SKB extension, yeah, maybe we're a little bit wary on that. Um, the networking people haven't always been especially accommodating when we've made requests like that. Um, so we're not exactly sure how that's going to work yet, but we'll come up with something. Or not. One of, uh, one of the two. Okay. So, um, and then there's labeled NFS for NFS4. Uh, this is a really interesting uh, conundrum here because labeled NFS was defined and it defined, was defined as, and it, it, the definition included information about how the data that's being passed back and forth from, between the client and the server is formatted, which, has, which, uh, sma well, sorry, <clears throat> which Linux very carefully ignores doesn't put it in, doesn't read it, just assumes that the information that came in is the format that whoever is going to read it wants to use. That's going to require some, uh, some enhancement before, so that we can actually tell who, who's, going, who's going which way. Uh, the NFS developers are looking at that, looking at, at how they might, want, might go about doing that. Um, We'll see how that goes. So that's where we are. Yeah, that's where we're headed. Uh, hopefully, uh, we'll have we'll have the next round in five five ish. Um, hopefully, we'll have all the rest of the things, all the rest of the problems solved and a, a path for them. Uh, not too long after that, and that's where we are. Questions? Going once. Um, in the uh, audit records, you showed that the various LSM contexts will be displayed parallel alongside the legacy, uh, like sub equal one. Is the same thing going to be there in PROCFS as well? Uh, so, yes. So. So what we'll do in procfs, um, okay, you will get the value, if, if you use the, the existing interfaces, for example, proc self adder current, you will get the first, one, first LSM that provides one, unless you've set the display, in which case you're going to get the value that you've, you've, you've set it for. Okay, we have to do new interfaces for the, new, for the, the compound format because otherwise it's, you're not going to get information that you're going to be able to read. If you get the, got the compound format, if you're running smack, the first, the label you would get would always be smack. And that's not what you want. You want the value of smack, not the name of smack. So backward compatibility, it would be really nice if we could just put it in one place. We know we can't. Is that the question? OK. Other questions? Uh oh. You're going to send me some man pages patches for those proc changes? Sorry? You're going to send me some man page patches for those proc changes? Of course. <laughs> Thank you. Other questions? If not, let's thank you okay. for the talk. Thank you.